Yeah. So if you've just joined in, joined toin, in? I don't even know where that came from. I think what it is, Bodie, you're wearing pink a hoodie, a pink hoodie, which I keep thinking it was one of those those pea hat thingies. And it's kind of throwing oh. me off because I'm... <laughs> I see it now. D- you do, right? Because I'm kind of attracted to you now. And it's weird. It's awkward. <laughs> and it's... It, yes, that's that's work it, work it. Yeah, yeah with the microphone so, cutting out the bottom of the hood, it looks like just a little bonnet. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. And with the, you know, the headphones and the shape and, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you just look real quick, you're like, is that a pea hat? <laughs> oh, my gosh. We finally got somebody on the show who's wearing a pea hat. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, you missed a whole bunch of stuff. Actually... If you're watching yeah. on YouTube, you missed about five minutes of me trying to figure out why Bodie had an echo. And one of our viewers, Craig, Craig, can we say Craig can like that? Should we say Craig or should we just say Voltrog? Oh, yeah, we should say Voltrog. Voltrog. If you haven't checked out his stuff on D-Sound yet, there's some there's some new stuff up there. And, and a couple of his songs I use for my bumps. Yep, that's Voltrog. my intro, outro, yeah. Yeah, I really like for uh, Agora Radio. Is that what? Is that what's it called? Radio Agora. Radio yeah. Agora. I don't know why. I did a did a little flipper flipper Rooney thing, but yeah, I like that. I like the music. I, but I was a little bummed out when you picked it. I was like, man, I would have used that. Now I can't. Yep, totally, that's why I did it. He took it because I did good. Just despite you because I I I knew you would like it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that that would have been perfect for so many many things, but alas. So we're we're gonna do a, I guess, I don't know what we're gonna end up getting to today. I did a little bit of promotion for the show. I didn't do a lot, man. I did kinda... some research. I found the subject of one of them. Do you want to just do that now, since that'll be a short thing before we get to the big juicy? Since you put the work into actually finding the subject. It it doesn't really even help us much because he's just like a normal dude with like 500 friends. Um, and he just posted and then he shared the article that has his photo he took with his telescope of the Tesla. Yeah. He's, he's a his Czech astronomer. Martin. Yep. His name is... What the freak Martin is his name? Maschek? Ma- Masik? I don't Martin know how Martin Masik? Martin uh, Masik? I don't know how to pronounce that little thingy above the S. Martin Masek. That's what I was thinking of, Masek. But apparently he's part of the government uh, false flag operation. He's part of the hoax, man. He's actually the ground control for the whole thing. He's the mastermind. (laughs) He probably is. He's probably the guy that sent out that Hawaii false alert, too. That and all the recent sightings of UFOs. That's totally him. Right. Right, I, I, it's all starting to come together. Uh, he used his telescope to snap a picture of Elon Musk's Tesla in space. Yeah, and I had written on my article, by the way, that I suggested that that should be the name of a musical, and I was willing to produce it or to write, write it. But I am willing to go in with Voltrog on that. Voltrog, if you're interested. We need to write that musical, Tesla's yeah. in Space. I'll do the visuals. How's that? Yeah, you do the visuals. Oh, by the way, speaking of visuals, let's get this out of the way. Because we got a hot new shirt. How many shirts of these have you sold so far? Um, boom, I can check. So, bum, bum, so, bum, so this, is, this is my favorite shirt. This is actually, I'm debuting it for this show. But it's actually going to be the shirt that I wear for the Monday show. But I'm wearing it now. There you go. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. Can you read it? Yeah, I'd rather face the danger of a madman with a gun than empower the state to define what a madman is. Yeah, that's a good conversation piece. Wear that to church. And go to like one of the vigils. There you go. One of the vigils. That would be a good one. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Show up with... One of the uh, I've sold three so far. You sold three. One of them was me. Yep. It's, and one of yep. them was Sarah. 
Swift, actually. She's the, uh, if you're watching on the Liberty Principle page, she is the power behind the power. Uh, bum, bum, bum. So, so she's, she's going to be, she's going to be my t-shirt gun twin. So, so that's there you cool. go. And it's got like 1911s on it. Ooh, I should put the link to that. Now, where is that link? I should drop that into the, can you drop that into the conversations? Agora.threadless.com slash designs slash madman. Mad lad. Not mad lad. Mad yep. man. Mad man. I'll, I'll add it in, as a comment. I've been watching PewDiePie videos and he's been doing this whole mad lad thing. And now mad lad's in my head. Do you, you watch, watch the Pewds? PewDiePie? Yeah, I watch them sometimes. I watch the Pewds. I like the Pewds. He's actually funny. He is. I used to hate there's him. A reason, there's a reason he's he's popular. Yeah, I and, used to hate him, and I really believe the only reason I hated him was because he was so popular. Right, and you're jealous. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he he's the biggest YouTuber, and but I do like how he handled things when he got into that whole uh, race, whatever that whole kerfluffle, and he was just like, yeah, I ain't going anywhere. I'm just right. gonna keep on keeping on. He, yep. he lost out on some huge coinage, though. Anyway, so that was our Lozilla. <laughs> That's that was it. But you you tracked him down, and you're connecting to him, and you're you're consulting with uh, uh, Stalkers Anonymous, which is a association for people who are trying to learn how to be effective stalkers, but they don't want. I think I've said too much. Probably. Yeah, probably. Yep. yep. You're yep. You are yep. planning on stalking this guy, right? No, I was just gonna show? send him a friend. I was gonna send him a friend request. You gotta get him on the show. I gotta get him on the show. I don't think he speaks English. You know what? Just tell him. Listen. Just get on the show. I just All sit right. there and hold up, not- hold up your picture of Tesla's in space, and then Voltrog will sing the opening theme to Tesla's in space because I'm sure by then we're going to have this thing knocked out. Yeah, he'll get it. He'll get it. He'll nail this down. He hasn't responded, by the way, so I don't know if he's interested in this. But I am ready to go on. Yeah. Well, just so so I have evidence, I'm going to... um, I'm going to record this moment of me adding him as a friend. Oh, you're... You're going to record it on your version. By the way, uh, you can watch the show two places right now. You can watch it on DLive. DLive, is it at Bodhi Agora? Yeah, at Bodhi.agora. So what is it? D DLive. What's the DLive.io slash at Bodhi.agora. Yeah, there you go. You know what? I'll put that in the link in the in the thing here. Hey Jacob, how you doing? So this is Alright. I'm gonna you? add I'm gonna do this now. I'm gonna hit add friend and see what happens. Okay, see if he responds. Other people you may know, a bunch of anarchists. <laughs> Poor guy. All right, friend request sent. I will uh, keep you guys updated. Yeah, this he, time next he, week, we'll we'll get a thorough uh, report from Bodhi. Um, hopefully, he'll still be wearing his pee hat. Because, dude, you're looking good in that pee hat. Hey, hey is I'm, it I'm, pee hat? Look what I have. You have a pink I mug. I have a pee mug. Mm-hmm. A pee mug. So let's get to the real part of the show now. And this is actually, this is, this is going to be the most important part of the show. And that is yeah. Atlanta. So yep. first of all, you can decide what you want to tell the studio audience and what you don't. It's all entirely up to you. But but you went to Atlanta. Am I? Is that right? Yeah, and not 20 minutes after departing from my plane and getting onto MARTA, their sub, their mass transit system, we were pretty much confronted by a absolute madman. No, a mad lad. I am a madman. I am no oh, threat to you. He's a mad the, lad. Yeah. Mad lad? Mad lad. Lad? Mad lad. Mad lad! Mad lad! Mad lad. Okay. Yeah. Yep. He was tweaking out. He thought I took his money. We went to move cars. He kept following us. He wanted to 
No, what did he want to say? He wants to punch me in the face, yada yada. I should beat the shit out of you, yada yada. Wow. Well. Yeah. What? What? What did he look like? Um, I can't describe him without being deemed racist. Really? Wait. Are you? He, wait. It, so it was like okay. The, the was he Caucasian? The, no. Was he black? Yes. Okay, so I went to Caucasian first, so I'm not racist. But he had <laughs> he had pants down to his like knees, and he had shorts up to his past his belly button, and he was all crazy. He, he was all hoodied out. He was he was full hood. He was the ATL, right? Like, yep. When you think ATL, this is ATL, baby. Actually, no, I don't. The ATL. He was he was out of his mind, and he was pretty much hammered and probably on something else because he was very delusional and sweating was he was he small was he tall was he burly uh, was he thin no he was he was a little bitch i it, it wasn't even uh, he wasn't even intimidating he was just fucking crazy so he was a black john smith yeah pretty much yeah. <laughs> like you don't right. want to touch like i don't want to touch him I'm just kidding, John. You know I love you. I don't want to get the cooties. I don't want to have to get right. tested for hepatitis. Did he have Pap's blue ribbon? Because then he definitely is the black John. Smith. Probably. 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 <laughs> that makes sense. So he was was he intimidating to you? Uh just in the fact that I didn't want to deal with it. Did you I didn't know what he had. I didn't know if I was about to get stabbed. I didn't know if I was going to get shot. I didn't know if I was like, I had, I had a plan in my head. I knew what I would go for. I would just try and choke him out as quickly as possible. Best move, especially in close proximity. Absolutely. Yep. Just get his back and take him down and then just be done with it. But I didn't, in that process, I still could get bit. I could get stabbed. I could get, so all these things are running through my head and I'm like, man, I just want to go home. And you weren't even home. And I was nowhere near home. I was about a thousand miles away from home. Yep. Yep. You you, you were going to the ATL. What, what yep. brought you to the ATL, may I ask? Uh, visiting, visiting my girlfriend's family. You're, wait, okay. I wish you would have just stopped visiting my girlfriend's and then just left it there. Yeah, that would have been, no. <laughs> you don't want uh, that, no. No, 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 no. Family, family, girlfriends, family, single girlfriend, one girlfriend, as in one, uno, uno, one. So, wow. so you're seeing this guy, and he's uh, I, obviously, I think also. Well, you just outlined it. There's such unpredictability. You, you know, right. this guy could go total and, nuclear war, like behind me there. If you're watching right. my version of the show, I don't know who else is on the train. I don't know, like. I don't know. Maybe he's just going to scare me off the train onto the platform and then I'm going to get fucking jumped. Yeah. You, you, yeah, yeah that's yeah. another thing you don't know. Like he's got a crew. He's going to set you up. Right. So what do you do next? Now, now this guy, you're on the train. So what's your next move? Wait for the next stop. And we got out. We were going to just and train change trade cars we're just gonna walk down the platform or wait and well our, we jump back on the train after he came out of the train to follow us and then we were in a separate car and but then the next stop he came into the next car so we moved and then he came and he followed us it was maybe like three or four times so this guy's literally train hopping with you following you yep and you're in a position where I mean, honestly, even if I was carrying, I don't know necessarily that carrying is a factor here. I don't know. No, not really. I mean, you're not going to pull a gun out at this point. Nope. Guy has to go after you. Actually, at no point would I have pulled my gun out. That's all I was just going to say. If he was at a distance and he pulled a knife and he started charging you, then maybe. But when you're that close, I think you're right. Your best bet. Get a hold of him and and subdue him as fast as possible. Yep. Because you're just as 
you're just as likely to have your gun taken from you unless you really, if you really know what you're doing, you're really trained and you got right. it, then maybe. But even then, I'm assuming you have probably about as much training as I do. Yeah. And I have a modicum, so I would not feel comfortable probably. So that's that's something to think about. But um, no, uh, the best bet. Well, I was just trying to put distance between us and hoping he got distracted or there would be a car full of enough people where it would, you know, perhaps um, de-incentivize. I don't know. De-incentivize. But, yeah, if he got <laughs> bored, maybe. Right. Right. After a while, you're like, yeah, man, I have because you figure if he's bombed out, you know, it'd be easy for him to make a mistake in the transitions too. there's right. all kinds of reasons you could be thinking, if I just keep moving, this guy's going to give up. But I mean, I have my suitcase. I have my girlfriend. I have my camera bag. She has her purse and all this. We're carrying all this shit. So like, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Right. Do I get, do I give it to her and now she's a target? Do I keep it? Do I how do I how do I No, you don't give it to her. You don't do that. Obviously, right. you don't want to make her a target. Right. So then it's like what the fuck? So then let's get to the to the big part of the story, the reason that you wrote your article on right. Steam it. Uh I finally saw the blue light on the platform signifying yeah. signifying a police station. Are so, you saying that you ran to the police? You called the cops? We didn't call them. I'm saying metaphorically. But metaphorically, yeah. 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 Okay. There was no other... Uh, there, Besides getting into a fight, there was really no other option. And the thing is, if you get into a fight... Now I'm going to jail. You, well, you might not be, but you don't know. And right. you're in the ATL. This ain't your place. You don't know. You don't right. know anything. So you don't know. You could. I mean, you had legitimate reason to put him down. Oh but yeah. If you did, I mean, you know, let's you know, violation of that. He violated your nap, dude. He was violating your nap. It's totally violating your nap. He was crowding all up in you. You would have been totally justified. Yep. But it might not have happened. The way that you, even if you could have totally subdued him, yeah, you had a chance. You had a real risk that it wasn't just him you'd have to worry about, right? And the other factor. Let me ask, ask this question: What percentage of, uh, what was the ethnic breakdown of the folks around you? Um, we were pretty white. Okay, so then there's that factor. You don't know if you start right. wailing on this man. That might that might be interpreted incorrectly, especially, oh, yeah. I'll say, especially in the climate that we have today, where everybody is so on guard against everyone and everyone's looking to declare everyone a racist and a Nazi and commie and, yep. you know, we're all so terrible people. In that context, it's like, what, what do you what what is the best choice? All I wanted to do was get us away from him. Yeah. And, and there was really no way to. So finally you saw the light. Yep. Finally. We hopped out and there was a cop on the platform. And as we're walking in that direction, he's bolting out of the train. And the cop turns around. Like, What the fuck is going on? Did he say that? No. No. I don't think he's, he didn't say fuck, but... Um, yeah, he pretty much asked us what the hell, what, what's what's going on, blah blah blah. Um, so we told him. And the other guy's like, "Nah, man, they took my money. They took my money." And uh, we proceeded to. Well, he, they, they basically separated us. Right? There's another cop that came onto the platform, separated us. They both questioned us, and then they figured it out quite quickly that this guy was a lunatic and drunk. And then they arrested him. And then that was the end of the story. Uh, pretty much. And then, well, they asked us to come down to the station to make a statement. And if we wanted to press charges. And you didn't press charges? Nope. 
no harm, no foul, but leave me the well, fuck alone. Also, you'd have to come back to Atlanta. Yeah. That's a major factor. <laughs> yeah. That's, I'm not, it's not worth it. It's really not worth it. they found drugs on him? Yep. But, but then they, they let him go, even with the drugs, right? Yep. Probably just had a small amount. What, have Very weed small. Or? They, they basically said, yeah, we got him on something else, but it's not even worth prosecuting. So they, they actually were kind of pushing us to make um, two press charges. Okay. So they could give him something of, of a, a good collar. Right. A good, sti- good collar. Yeah. And we, of course, said no. So then you wrote an article. And then I wrote an article, and everybody share some of the key parts of it with our uh, audience. Well, not all cops are bad. That's the um, gist of it. Because within the current paradigm and the context you're in in different situations, basically because you're disarmed or basically because you're in somewhere you don't know, that acts as a a buffer to the problems that it's created. Well, I'm interested. I thought I had the article up. Dang it. You have the article. Get this article up. So I have, uh, uh, um, I, uh, I did something to your article. I, uh, I'm going to do this, by the way, if you're, if, if you're a friend or if you send me stuff that I really like, I'm going to be doing something on iState.tv. I'm calling it I Steam It because it's, you know, you get it right. I is, you know, you get it. You get it. It's a thing. It's what we do. Uh, I'm going to take articles from Steam It, mostly from friends I know, and I'm going to write a little blurb and uh, just highlight a, a key part of what I think is maybe a key part of the article and hopefully get people to go to your Steam It, go to the actual Steam It article, and if they're members of Steam It, hopefully they'll give you an upvote and you know, yep. share the love. And so that's what I did here. Now, I shared... I thought this was, uh, well, I, I shared the meat of the story, but I didn't necessarily share what I really liked about the story. Uh, and I won't repeat the meat of the story because cause you, you, just, you just got it there. But you did point out uh, that he was re- arrested without any real incident after some further questioning for threatening us, violating Florida policy, and this led to them finding drugs on him and uh, i want to get down to the where is it here why uh, okay never mind why was this a mistake get down to the end here granted i was unarmed because of the laws while traveling if i had been in a better position to defend myself sure things would have gone different but i think we've already outlined your right the the gun coming into play here even if you had it probably not i mean i i i mean i i think you really have to be like really threatening my life for me to pull a gun on you like yeah i don't want to go to let's potentially kill each other over some dude doing what he was doing i'm i'm not ready to try to end a life over that i think you probably feel the same way yeah uh and maybe for the better maybe for worse Maybe, maybe for the better. You don't really. Go ahead. You don't really know. You can't possibly. I, I can't possibly know, but I feel ninety plus percent sure. If I had been carrying, it wouldn't have won any. It wouldn't have won much different than what you did. Uh, I, I would have gone through all the same things that you did. Okay, I could take him. I would have been thinking about all the things I could have done, and, and then I would have been thinking about. Okay, I'm in Atlanta, and I surrounded yep. by people that don't look like me and that could be an issue and yeah i would have done what you did i would have kept trying to get away and then when i saw a cop i would have went to the cop and tried to get help yes i would have i would have called a cop which is yep. incredibly there's not many scenarios where i would want to call a cop uh but uh, it was what, either what that or, what's that it was either that or fight right <laughs> I was yeah. in no. Yeah, right. Um, and yeah, I you, you want to try to avoid fighting for a lot of reasons. Uh, mm-hmm. So you end it here. You say, as a side, as a society, we have shifted this burden 
to the authority of the state. And that is, you're talking about the bystander effect. There's a lot of people around that could have come to your aid. Yep. And said, dude, knock it off. Stop bothering that guy. But, right. you know, we, we live in a society where we have been conditioned. This is why you have the gun grabbers out, because they've been so conditioned to believe it's the state that defends us. We don't defend ourselves. It's the state that defends us. We don't right. defend each other. It's the state. I mean, even even if uh, while well, Marta has no firearms policy or whatever, um, except for a permit or however it is, even if there was strict gun control, that still would have been a situation where I wouldn't have been comfortable, even if I knew he didn't have a gun. Yeah, like if it, I knew he didn't have a gun and everything was totally legal, and I knew that I wasn't going to get into issues by using a gun i again i can't know for sure but i seriously doubt that i would have used my gun right i've been in a couple situations where i was confronted one time it was a road rage situation and a guy followed me to the school and he chased me down and he was all up in my car and and i was just like i mean i was pissed i wanted to get out of the car and beat the crap out of this guy Yep, but I didn't do it, and the reason I didn't do it is because I had a gun, and I knew the moment that I stepped out, I've increased the possibility that this ends in somebody dead, and I did not want this guy dead. So I just, I just, I was very calm and nice, and and cons and I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I said I'm sorry when I was not really sorry. I admitted to things that I didn't do, like I'm sorry I cut you off, and like I didn't cut you off, but I was like, I just. I just wanted the guy to go away, and I didn't want to escalate. So I don't think I would have done it any different in that situation. So no. there you were. And, that, you know, we anarchists, yes, yeah, sometimes we're going to find ourselves in that awkward position where we're going to have to actually go and seek a cop. And and uh, what where is the one part here that I... Did I invent it in my head or does it have? You're talking about what cops are like and how we... Oh, here we go. Now, as an anarchist, I'm not a huge fan of the police, but this moment really caused me to rethink the problem. In this instance, the officer didn't harm anyone. He actually did his job. I'm honestly grateful. The night could have been a lot worse. But what does this mean for me or you? It means that not all cops are bad. They are still individuals. In their own respects. It doesn't mean they're all good or that there isn't a better way, but there's a place for them in our current paradigm. Now that I thought that that actually is the most significant part of your article. That's what I really like about the article. Not even sure I a hundred percent agree with you, but I like the questions. What I like about the questions is I just don't think going around and saying all cops are bad and evil is going to win any people over to the cause. Not that there is a cause. But Not at all. And I mean, I kind of wrestle with this and I don't know if I'll ever get over this, but I do have, there's a group of people that if you're in this group, I am actually probably going to collectivize you and assume the worst about you. And I'm not saying I should, I'm just saying I it probably happens. will do it. And that is the gun grabber. You're a gun yeah. grabber. I just want to nuke you. Like the thing behind me, if you're watching the video, yeah. my version of the video. I, I just I just want to shame you. I want you to feel like you just stood up and said, hey, you know, bestiality, that's not that bad, is it? I want you to feel like hum the, the level of humiliation that a person would feel that, that stood up in church and said that. I want you to feel that level of humiliation. It's probably, mm -hmm. I, to a certain degree, I think it's not a bad strategy, but if it's your only strategy, that's your problem. There's context. There's a place. And there is a place that I think there is a place, for instance, to humiliate cops, to kind of say, well, dude, you're participating in a coercive enterprise model that relies on you doing bad things to people that did nothing to nobody else. It requires right. you to arrest people.
who didn't fundamentally hurt somebody else. It, it requires you to threaten people with force who didn't harm anyone else. I think there's a place for that. But I, I don't know necessarily that... I mean, you and I can see it. And I'm not even 100% sure that you and I are right. I'm 99% sure we are, though. But yeah, I'm sure. What's that? I said I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm as I'm as sure as I can be about anything. But you know, I'm just going to say for the for the sake of not being an absolutarian, let me just say, hey, I could be wrong. Which you know, I mean, I could be wrong that I don't exist. You know, it's a, anyway. So these guys, these guys and these gals, these these folks, they don't they they don't see the world the way that we see the world. No. They're. They're not waking up every day and like they're not weighing in their head. Who, you know, I don't know, man. Non aggression principle. <laughs> I mean, it's the thing. It's uh it's the it's the guiding light. It's it's the church of nap. And and I feel bad because I'm not following it. But you know what? I'm just I'm making the choice to make my money. I don't care about the nap, even though I know so. they're not even thinking about the nap. They're not thinking in any way, shape, or form that they're doing anything the least bit wrong. Some of them, I think, some of them probably do know they're doing wrong things. And they don't give well, a that's what, but you don't that's know. What, that's what converts a lot of people is realizing what they're doing. Yeah, real. Some of them come to realize what they're doing, and they count the cost, and they're like, "It's too much." too too costly for me i'm gonna keep doing what i'm doing i've only got three years to my pension and then i'm living fat and you know what i tell you what i'll do you know okay i'm gonna arrest this guy for smoking a plant but i'm gonna help Susie get a tricycle for christmas so you know it's good yeah i'm doing good while i'm i'm not but what i like about what you're doing here is or maybe whether you intended it or not is getting people out, getting anarchists, if you will, outside their comfort zone, their yep. their own safe space. <laughs> that's what I that's what I try to do with anything. It's not even just anarchists, but in this case, this would do it. Well, yeah, and it has brought out some some interesting reactions, but not as much as I thought. Hey, John Smith here. Hey, John, how you doing? Good to see well, you. I think I think most people just kind of uh, glossed over it. Yeah, I was I thought it for sure that you would get more reactions. I shared it. I didn't yep. get much, but we did get one interesting thing. Should I say his name or not? Yeah, go for it. Because he commented. Don Clancy on says, yeah. "Sorry, but this didn't really do it for me." Writer admits the state disarms people and becomes the solution to its own problem, but shrugs? I, I don't think that that's I what your article's about at all. I didn't you're not, shrug. You didn't shrug? You're, you're not coming down on the side of, 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 uh, of the coercive enterprise police model, right? <laughs> you're not endorsing that. No. You're talking no, about no. an individual. Right. Just talking about this human being, that you recognize something, that this guy is a human being. And, you know, I... I really, I won't say that I always do this, but I generally try not to jump on hate wagons when it comes to people, even when they do stuff that maybe they deserve a hate wagon. I think I do stuff sometimes that could easily, if I had a big enough audience and I screwed up in the right way or the wrong way, however you want to view it, I could <laughs> deserve a hate wagon. But, oh, yeah. But, you know, I, I, I do bad things sometimes, and I also you know, make sacrifices for my daughter. I, you know, I, I give money to people that need it. I, I'm multifaceted and not all my sides are, are good. Not all my, well, relatively speaking. And right. that's this cop. And what you saw, this guy presented a certain aspect of himself that was decent, Right. You, mm -hmm. you, are you signaling to your quarterback? You coaching a, a little a, a a pee wee league while this is going on? Pretty much. Okay, good. We're good. So, if you had decided, I am just 
you know, cop, you know, cop is Hitler, and you approached him with cop is Hitler, you'd have been in a world of hurt, probably. Yeah, it wouldn't have worked out. No, it it, it wouldn't have worked out. Because the dude is, he's an individual. It's like, even, it's, everybody that surrounds us is operating in a paradigm that gives justification. And this is the thing that I struggle with. I seem to go through this, I don't know, once every three or four months I go through this. All of my neighbors, not all, but most, they operate in a paradigm that gives justification for taking, in some cases, lethal action, at, at the least using force intimidation to 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 get people to not do things that aren't harming anyone else that's most of the people around us yeah like what separates the cop from the guy uh sitting i i saw a video recent you know what i'm just talking away why don't you talk no keep going you saw a guy so i i I, it was a video. I saw this video and this uh, uh, this one, this couple, they were, it was, you know, those montages where I show cars that do stupid things and then get in crashes. And yeah. at one point, this, this this couple's driving along and this car goes speeding by. And they're like, and right away, they're like, get his license number. And when it's speeding by, it may have been like 10 miles over, over. He wasn't really putting anybody at risk. It was on the highway. And they're like, you got to get his, get his license plate. We got to, we got to, we got to, we got to let the cops know that this guy's speeding. What's the difference between them and the cop? They have the same mentality. They make the cop possible. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to put cops into the, you're literally Hitler category which many of us do because that's who we are, then we're going to have to put everybody around us into your Hitler category, which I'm going to tell you is probably going to hurt your chances to operate meaningfully in the world around you unless you choose to live in the middle of the woods. Pretty much. Did I make my point? Do you, do you even get my point? Did I even make a point? I think I made a point. I think you made a point. Um, wow. I just drew a blank. Well, the, the, the essential <laughs> point is when we start to collectivize people and put them in these demon boxes, we really reduce... First off, we reduce our ability to satisfy our own preferences such as we can within this course of enterprise limitation that we have around us. We can't avoid it. Like you, right. you it didn't makes... have a private security to turn to. No. Your choice was oh. use the course of enterprise institution, as crappy as that is, or or take a really big risk that could fundamentally hurt you. Yep. I guess. Sometimes you want to take that risk, but not in that, not in that situation. Uh, no, not in that situation. Not when I have somewhere to be and something to do and a whole bunch of other things to worry about. <laughs> right. So, it's like, do I really want to spend the night at a jail or do I want to spend the night at a hospital? Do I want to, what do I really want to do? Yeah. You, I just want to, you want to get back to the, to the, I don't know what kind of lotions you guys use, but that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, I just leave it at that. And yeah. And and so again, you get off the train, you see the cop, and you're not treating him like Hitler. You, you're you're going to assess him as an individual, because yeah. even within the state of on state face parameter, even within the office of of cop people still have opportunities to choose to be, I'm going to use the word subjectively, decent. And you give them an opportunity to be decent. And this cop was. Matter yep. of fact, this, this cop was more than decent. This cop was a lifesaver. It worked out pretty damn well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what was funny, too, is on our way back, we actually, 
He was in our train. The, the, the same officer was in our train car on the way to the airport. <laughs> wow. That's weird. Right? The, there's the, like five days later, he, he's, he's just on the train. And I look back and I see him. He's like, oh, hey. He's like, it's a lot different in the day, huh? I'm like, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Brian Barker. Hey, Brian, how you doing? They said they wear uniforms for a reason. Can't give them the benefit of the doubt for the same reason. I'm no sa- salesman. Yeah, it's not. It's not about being a salesman. It's about giving yourself an opportunity to actually satisfy your own preferences within what I like to call the reality of power around you. There is a which, reality of power, which, which is your context. That's like which, literally. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's not about giving the officer the benefit of the doubt. It's about giving you an opportunity, not the officer. It's it's hey, I'm going to see is if, if it's possible. Can I take a less painful route out of this sticky situation? If yeah. you. If you don't, quote unquote, give them the benefit of the doubt and you come off immediately throwing off uh, you are Hitler attitude, your chances of getting out of that sticky situation is, is pretty it, slim. It just got stickier, pretty much. It just got it just got a whole lot stickier. And that's I'm why like, saying, that's why I don't understand. Like you see some of the videos of people getting pulled over and stuff and the officer just asked them for their ID, which isn't necessary. It, it's basically in my mind, it's not a huge deal. He could find out. He probably already knows who I am from my license plate or whatever. Presenting my ID takes no real effort on my part. It's not really sacrificing my privacy or doing anything like that. So to present that, it's really not a big deal. And then you see videos of people, well, I don't have to show you. I don't have to show you. And it escalates the situation. So does the cop, but something well, like I, that. If, I think if that's an individual bind, choice. Well, it I isn't. Think you acknowledge it's if, an individual if choice. If you're in that, if you're in that bind, why wouldn't you just take the easy way just to get out? It depends on how you're approaching it and what's important to you. You, right. you may actually see an opportunity to get on video a demonstration of who these folks really are and what they're really to do. And for you, it's like. I'm willing to pay the cost for that. So then you're doing the right thing for you. If you're willing to do that, yeah. Yeah. But me, I don't I don't um See for me that's that's not my area. That's not my field. So I I get pulled over by a cop and it's yes sir, here's my ID. Thank you very much. And who knows, there may come a time when I think, you know, for one reason or another, nope. This is enough. Not today. Right. This is it. Nice, nice boots, officer. I didn't know they made those for men. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, exactly. I didn't know they made those boots in that style for men. Right. <laughs> that's, that's yeah, the... that one might not work so well. Did Unless they have boss humor. design your outfit, because I know he designed the Nazis, so it kind of never mind. Oh, Ooh. oh, ah. Uh. Um. But, you know, it's an individual choice. I wouldn't want to say absolutely. Yes, everybody gets pulled over. They should be, you know, you're a, you're stupid. You're an idiot if you don't just give them your ID. But I'll also say, you know, the other extreme is, well, if you just hand them your ID and you just play along, you're not a real anarchist. Right. Hey, I don't really care. <laughs> I don't really care either. I don't wake up, and you know, I don't wake up and I'm like, I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, are my eyes bloodshot? My eyes are not bloodshot. Oh no, I'm not a real anarchist. Oh no, and I, I don't lose sleep over whether I'm a quote unquote real anarchist or not. Oh, and Larry has joined the fray. Larry, how you doing? Larry said an opportunity to get on video. How about set up a situation and pretend you are an angel? Yeah, that happens too. I, yep. I, I wouldn't say everybody is like that, but yeah, there are definitely the. Uh, I'm gonna say the drama queens. They exist. That always happens. And, you know, it's in and, and that type of activism is one of the easiest ways to build a following, build standing, build an audience is when you go out and do stuff like that. This isn't at all to suggest that I'm saying that most people that do this, that that's what they're doing. I'm just saying, yes, that's some people that and, and you know what? I'm 
<laughs> you know, Larry, okay, there, that's good for them, whatever. Uh, I don't really care if they do that. Uh, oh, and Jacob, Jacob missed you, Larry. So glad we got the band back together. Jacob LaBelle <laughs> and Larry Cousins. That's the band right there. Very, yes, very, band. they play very different instruments. Very, very. I believe Larry, Larry plays an accordion, and I believe he he plays it in what's what's the our our march? What what is the two four time? Is that what marches are? Yeah, everything's in two four time. Meanwhile, uh, Jacob's over there. Uh, I, th I think he's playing the saxophone. He's playing ju ju uh, fusion jazz. So <laughs> that's that's kind of the difference that's going on there. But they sound great together. So anyway. I don't know if you have anything more to say about this. I thought it was, I thought it was really a uh, just thought provoking. Yeah, I'm a little. Uh, my my biggest regret is actually getting. Uh, let me say, uh, scared. Once that fear was there, once that unknown was there, once I realized he was there, I made eye contact. That's when I knew something was was wrong, and that's when we acted. And I think that started the pursuit. I think I could have avoided the whole thing if I had just just stood not engaged. Mind. Right. You don't know. You're you don't know. Probably right. But why? Why does that? Why does that mm, define regret? <laughs> um. I wish I could have handled it myself. I'm not sure. Well, I mean, how trained are you to deal with someone who's totally, if he was hopped up on drugs? Um, not recently trained or halfway prepared. So it probably wouldn't have ended well for me. If I'm honest with myself. You also had, it wasn't just you. No. So you, you had your girl with you, and, yeah, you had to protect your girl. Right. I know that sounds very patriarchal of me, but. Eh, well, she would have, uh, I honestly think she, she probably would have handled it better, but she was more concerned for me because I was with her as well. Because she's, <laughs> she's used to that. That's like, that's how, that's, this is her turf. She knew exactly how to deal with it. She just didn't react to it because I was with her. So she she let the man take the lead. Uh, for the most part. And yet you sit here wearing your pee hat. And I sit here wearing my and pee hat. You're the patriarchy. Yep. Like even when when her leadership would have done a better job, you let her defer to you. Yep. You little patriarchal pig. Yep. <laughs> That's what it all comes down to at the end of the day. I, I don't comes down to I, I I if you would have said something like hey brother I love you man what's up it might have changed the dynamic significantly I might I could have probably bodied him you could have bodied him I could have yeah. bodied him but that was the least thing I'm, that was like but also I mean you you probably did not have full control you were not in full self-awareness mode I'm assuming no given I was I was in fight or flight, and flight was yeah. the next option. And you were, you had been traveling for a long time. Yep. You're dealing with a lot of really stressful things. Yeah, yep. I, I wouldn't be too hard on yourself. I could, I mean, I have moments all the time where I look back and like, I wasn't self-aware. I wasn't on top of things. I know I could have handled that better. And then I say, well, who cares? I just move on. No, I yep. probably, I cry for days. I write horrid, horrid hate poems to myself, and, <laughs> and after a few days, I get over it. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, what I, turned. I, that's what turned into the Steam It article. I let it stew for a couple days, and then wrote it when I got home. Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed that you didn't get more of a reaction. You know, if this would have just been something that you posted on Facebook on your page, you probably would have gotten a lot more uh, reactions. Probably. I should probably you know, try that. People don't click on links and read articles. 
No, they know. don't. They That's read headlines. I, I think most of, I think most of the people that clicked it and, uh, well, actually, the few people that responded actually clicked and read it because of the title, so that worked. It, Larry but, said Andrew Andrew handled the whole deal fine. Good for Andrew. I think I think pretty much largely you did. I mean, yeah, yeah there's I'm a way. Sure. I can't even think exactly, but there is a way that maybe you could have treated it, you know, handled it differently. But I don't know. I th I think I think you handled it almost as well as you could have, given not even given this. I mean, just in general, even if yeah. you had been self-aware, if you had been totally self-aware and in full control of your decisions. You may very well have done exactly what you did. Probably. I think it's likely. Very likely. I think likely. it's likely. But, yeah, I know what you mean. I hate, uh, I remember when I was a kid and I would read these novels. And, you know, in novels, all, you know, the main, so often the characters are like, they're so self-aware. They're so cool and collected and, yeah, you know, they, they have all their faculties and the, the most pitched situations and I would read those and I always thought that's what I want to be I right. always wanted to be that person but I've the, never, the never become the, that person the ideal versus the practical versus the real are all three very different things yeah yeah absolutely yeah Some but uh, it was it was it was a worthwhile experience I'll say I, I value it in in some regard Oh, I I think you should value it. I think it was a really good experience for you. And it, you know, whenever you have those types of experiences where you're pushed to the limit, this is a cliche. You you already know this. I'm not dropping any knowledge on anyone, but I'll just repeat it. Uh, you know, when you get in those situations, that's when you really find out who and what you are. You learn a yep. lot more about yourself. Sometimes. I mean, sometimes your reaction could be that I'm going to find a way to deny it and run away if you didn't like the answers. But if you do, you, if you, you can, can yeah, you can you can fix it. You know, I I've, I've had I still have some moments in my life that uh, I look back at and oh, I wish I could go back. I could have my full faculties. I mean, I just had something recently, a few months ago. Some guy knocked on my door. He's running for office. And uh, I, I, I did the anarcho screeching with him. Yeah. And sent him on his way. And then afterwards, I was like, man, I could have, if I really, if I would have thought that out, if I wouldn't have just reacted, knee-jerk reaction, I could have had a more constructive conversation with this guy. But instead, yeah. I was just like, voting, mm, voting violence. Voting violence, that doesn't <laughs> work. But I didn't say that, but pretty much. <laughs> All right. I, I have to get and, going. Okay. Well, it's actually, we're, we're, we're at the end of the show there. Uh, we'll, we'll be back next week on Is Daily Tuesday. I have no idea what we're going to have on next week for Is Daily Tuesday. I do want to give everybody a heads up. I'm going to start saying these for the shows. And that is, uh, and, and I'll let you know this, this is the first you've heard of this, but April 1st through the 8th will be one of my sabbatical times. That's, uh, I follow the Eastern Orthodox uh calendar when it comes to passion week so that's partly what i do and i also during that period of time i i go through my okay what's working what's not working how do i tweak and you know i, I take my breath and figure out what i'm doing so there'll be no shows during the week of april 1st to the 8th so just getting everybody yeah. heads up cool. so when there's no shows nobody's surprised like, oh, all next right week, well what's that i'll be like oh next week next week when are you uh, and then during your whole vacation i'll be like hey you want to do a show yeah, you will. What you did last year, because I did this last year, and you're like, "Hey, you ready to do a show?" I'm like, "Dude, dude, dude." dude. Uh, anyway, I'll be back on my page, Paul Paul Gordon page. Uh, the Paul Gordon page, by the way, that you want to follow is the one right now. It's the one with the dude that has the AR-15, the one that was lost in the boating accident. You'll 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 figure it out. Uh, I'll be on there tomorrow, 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with headlines you may have missed. And tomorrow night, uh, 
We'll be back here with uh, Niz, the one true Niz, doing Is Daily Wednesday. Don't even know what we're going to talk about yet. Anyway, well, that's it. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you especially for the fo to the folks who took the time to comment. We'll see you next week. Good night, everybody. Peace.